Hi, my name is Prue McRae and this is my YouTube channel. Now, some of my videos are more popular than others, of course, and one of the most popular ones has been the one for this little bookmark. And people have sent me in pictures of so many different versions of this, and I know of some people who've, in, some individuals who've made dozens for themselves. So it seemed sensible to develop this into something else. So, from bookmark, we go to dangly pendant. And this, I hope, will have exactly the same appeal as that bookmark because it's really quick to make. All you need is a little bit of cord, a few beads, and you can adapt it to the way you want to. You also need some sort of pendant bale, like that, but you can, you can even make your own out of wire. I'm going to show you the setup for these pendants that I've made, but I think that once you've had a go, you'll probably try all sorts of things. So I hope you enjoy it. So here's a close-up of how these work. Your starting point is the bale. You can get all different sorts or make your own, as I've said before. Then the kumihimo starts right from that loop on the bale, and you've got a beaded section, followed by a knot, followed by a little dangly tassel. So you will need eslon cord, and you need about 80 centimetres for this, which is 32 inches. Now this is likely to be more than you need, but it gives you a little bit of leeway, and if you decide to make your dangles longer, uh, then you've got that flexibility. Take your bale, and thread your cords through, and what I should have said is we're doing double cords, uh, sorry, double quantities of our cords and single number of cords. So we've got four cords, and as I said before, they're 80 centimetres, 32 inches. Thread them all through the little loop on the bale, like that. Centre them, and I've shown this technique quite a few times. So we're just going to centre them on the cords, holding tight and positioning them on the round disc. And you're going to do them on either side of the dots, so like this. And don't pull too hard or you pull the cords right the way through. So I'm just put, slotting them in in the north, south, east and west positions. So these two go over like that and then the last two go in the bottom like that. And now you start to braid. What you want to watch out for is that you don't pull too hard or again you'll pull the cords through. So you might want to just pinch the cords there. And this is quite simply your regular round braid or Congo Gumi that you're going to use. And you need to do eight moves first of all without any beads. And that's simply going to be your top right down, bottom left up, quarter turn. So that's two moves. And then you continue until you've done eight moves. Then you thread on your beads. To make the design that I have, this is what I've threaded on. I started off with three seed beads, size eight. Then I threaded on two long magatamas. Now, long magatamas have slanting um, holes in them. So what I've done here is I have threaded through the hole that is closest to the tip of the bead, and I've threaded on two. Then I've threaded on three size six beads. Then I've threaded on two more long magatamas, and this time I've threaded them the other way. So one of the holes is more towards the middle of the bead, and I've threaded through that time. And then I threaded on another three size eight seed beads. On some of my designs, I also did two there, so you can play around with that. If you're not sure what I'm saying about the long magatamas, take a close look at the way they're pointing. So the first ones are pointing into the center, and the second ones are pointing upwards like that, into the centre, both into the centre. But you can play around and make whatever beads you want. But if you want to follow this design, you need to have this set up and you need to have it on all eight cords. All you need to do is add the beads in as you braid. And I have videos on that if you're not quite clear on how that's done. When you have braided all your beads in, you should have something like this. And what you need to do next is braid for a little bit more. You need about 
half a centimeter, about just over a quarter of an inch of plain braid without any beads. The next step is to pinch that braid so that it doesn't unravel and remove the cords from the disc. Now what you're going to do is an overhand knot and you want that knot to be really nice and close to the beads. So you may need to do several attempts. Start by making it fairly loose. And then ease the knot up while it's still loose to the position you want. So I'm pushing from underneath. Once it's in the position you want, then you can tighten it up and do that by tightening up each cord in turn, holding the knot, thumb on the knot, pull on the cord, each one in turn, and that will tighten up that knot. If your first attempt at the knot is not good, don't tighten up the cords, just give it another go. And now I'm going to talk you through how the tassel is made. All you need to do is take two cords, decide where you want the tassel, the beads to form, tie a little knot like that, and then thread on your beads. So here I've threaded on three long magatamas, and again on this one I've started with the, the top hole, the hole nearest to the end of the bead. I've threaded on three beads, and then I've tied another knot, this time a double knot, it might even have been a triple knot, as many knots as you need to stop those beads coming off. And then what you do is seal the knot with glue and snip off the, um, the tails. You can also um, seal the knot with a, with a naked flame or with a cord burner. If you do that, you may want to use glue as well, but use the glue afterwards. Don't use the glue before you use a naked flame. And you repeat that for all the other um, pairs of cords and you end up with a pretty tassel. So that was easy wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I will be seeing as many of these little pendants as I've been seeing of the bookmarks. And if you want to see other things that you can make using Kumihimo please subscribe to my channel because I've got lots of new ideas coming up. I try to upload every week or possibly a little bit longer than that sometimes, but there's so much to see. So do subscribe because then you'll be notified. And it also gives me an indication of, of whether people are enjoying what they see. So thank you very much indeed. Bye.